Hey, everybody, and welcome to Keeping It Spiritually Simple. And today it is my honor to have back on Maria Bernardis. You know, Miss Greekalicious. Uh, and the last time we talked, it was on the down low that she was relocating from, you know, NYC to the beautiful Hawaii. So she's going to talk all about the energy difference and what she's up to and, you know, the feeling of her frequency changing and what messages have been coming through and the missions that have changed. So welcome, girlfriend. Thank you. Thank you. It's an honor and, and a privilege to be, to, to be here and to be uh, with you. Yes. Oh, my God. So I'm receiving, first of all, a lot of messages and, you know, we can discuss what Mother Father God is saying to me. Uh, but we can talk about our transition and my change and uh, my change of mission, which is basically what we were discussing before recording. It was like, stop, stop, stop talking. We have to hit record because <laughs> we, we can sit on here for hours. <laughs> well, because we're on the same energy. Yes. Uh, that's why. Uh, so just, for, you know, very briefly, um, I moved from Babylon. Uh, Mother, Father, God said to me, Maria, I sent you to Babylon, which is New York City, because I want you to wanted you to see with your own eyes what was going on uh, and I did see um, so a lot of the stuff people think conspiracy theorists Maria saw it with these two eyes uh, and it was not pleasant and I said God why am I here at this underground party with these Babylonian people you know I'm not into this he said I want you to see it it happens so that when people say to you, does this happen? You can say, yes, and I've seen it with my own eyes. And God saved me from those situations because I could have, I could not have been around at this moment to tell people the stories. I was in some really difficult situations in some dark places. And I was like, God, how am I going to get out of here without being raped, killed or whatever? So I just want to put that into perspective. I have been in those situations. So I know for a fact that New York City is Babylon, not New York, New York City in particular, underground. Uh, and that's why they call it the city that never sleeps. It does not sleep. There is so much going on. So God sent me there from Australia because he wanted me to hold the light. Uh, I always wanted to come to Hawaii and he said, no, 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 no. You need to go there. So, um, so after much deliberation and prayer, I said, God, I feel that my work is complete. I've seen, I've done that all that I can to awaken people and they've been resistant. Um, so I feel that my role here is finished. There's not, no, more, no more value add that I can do other than energetically holding the light. And that's when I said to him, if I meant to move to Hawaii, make a way. This was my daily prayer. And this is a good prayer for everybody if they want to make a decision. So every day my prayer was, God, am I meant to go to uh, to Hawaii? If so, make a way. If not, shut the door. That was my prayer daily. And then he made a way. He found the apartment. He found everything for me. And he said, now pack up your bags and go. Uh, so what I've noticed here is the energy is unbelievable as far as high energy. And so are the people, the local Hawaiians, which, of course, in a past life, I was a Lemurian. So these are my people. I've come back home where I belong. And not only that, Sandra, God has a sense of humor because I am facing Diamond Head where the Lemurians live underground. Mm -hmm. So I am facing them and praying with them every day. Like you cannot get any more. This is manifestation. This mm -hmm. is how you manifest. So, um, so in a nutshell, he moved me from Babylon to heaven on earth and as a consequence he said he said to me your mission has now changed he said no longer are you here to help the people that think they're awakened because he said guess what maria 90 percent of them are not they think they are because they know a few things that have happened such as our children and whatever he said your role is to help the people in the category where more of them are going to ascend. I said, what do you mean? I, I said, I thought the awakened, more of them were going to ascend. He says, no. He says, the category of the most that are going to ascend, Maria, are those one that, ones that are just waking up. 
He said, you're going to help them. And that's the majority that are going to ascend. And he said, you know why, Maria? Because they're going to listen to you. And people like yourself, Sandra, not just me, of course, please. When I say that, it's not just me. I dude. hear you. Oh, my God. And he said, guess what? They're going to get you. They're going to start doing the work. They're going to start watching your videos. And guess what? They're going to catapult to 5D. And the ones that think they're awake, that are uncomfortable, I'm waiting for Nasara Jasara. I'm waiting for the Medved. Guess what? He said, they're going to the end of the class. He said, that's what I meant when I said... The, the first will become the last and the last will become the first in the Bible. He said, Maria, this is happening now. So Sandra, I'm very saddened because I spent, I have spent years doing, as you have, so many free videos for these so-called awakened people to help them. And from the majority, Sandra, I can only speak for myself, please, only for myself. I have had nothing but abuse, resistance, you're crazy, Nasara Jasara is coming in, Medved's, and guess what, guys? Three years down the track, I'm right. None of this has happened. I've said it all along. I've, I've said it all along, and, and, and I keep it to myself because I just know certain things. I don't need to be you know stuff but occasionally conversations have come up and someone even someone who's extremely popular here on youtube and so on we were face to face one day and about two years ago and she's like oh i'm, I'm waiting for nasar Jasar." and i said you do know not to wait for that right and the look i got and then we didn't work together and i thought we're just not on the same residence and that's okay that's okay yes. so i understand and, and it's okay because again, the wheat from the chaff has been separated. And, and it's okay because they're on a different timeline of ascension. I, we're not saying that no one is going you know, to ascend. That's not correct. It means that we're going to ascend on different timelines. I'm a person that knows, and this is why I was brought here, because I'm not from here. I was brought here to help the people and be one of the many leaders to help the people on the first round descent. Simple. So anybody that listens uh, to my message, and I can uh, always speak for you as well, Sandra, because mm. I know you're on the same timeline as mine. We are the people that were brought here to help those people on the first round. If my message is not resonating, guess what? You're not meant to be one of the ones ascending on the first round. And that's okay. Go, go. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I don't want you as part of my team or to listen to my messages or to take my guidance on or my wisdom because you're not part of the first round that's okay go to the back of the line join that controlled opposition get caught up with the things of this world get caught up with the gossip and i don't have to do anything i i don't care and it's interesting because god has said to me marie you need to get more blunt with your messages as people are noticing and not be that soft, Maria, that you tried to be because the people that are going to ascend on the first round have already got it. They're already doing the work. And one key message he said to me recently, Sandra, and I said, thank you, God. He said, all these energies that are happening, Maria, are to empower us, that's meaning the humans here, to find the solutions and manifest. So if someone's lacking money, they're not taking on the energies, seeking Mother, Father, God, and manifesting. You know, they're either lazy or couldn't be bothered or not doing the work. And he said, secondly, Maria, he said, you know how the med beds are going to come? I said, how? He says, I've already given that information uh, to someone that is already creating them. So we don't want to give them to you. We want to empower you to create. And guess what? I was invited to Aruba, all expenses paid to see, and here's some new technology that's coming out. And guess what I saw? This amazing man, David Schmidt, who everybody knows I love his quantum technology, he is regenerating legs. He is regenerating hearts. What does this sound like to you guys? Med bed, regeneration. Do you know what else he has uh, been doing? He has managed in a lab, to reverse age to 25. 
Okay, his current technology reduces age up to 10. This is why I look so young, everybody. Um, however, he's now done, and he said, guess what? He said, for anybody that's part of this company, this will be what you will be rolling out to the world. So do you see that God has put that manifested idea in particular people that he, and I can tell you now, I've met this man many times. He's not from here. He's not, he's a Palladian. Every time I speak to him. Um, so it's interesting how God has resonated me towards certain products or people because he said, Maria, uh, this is why I got you into quantum technology. Now I'm bringing the people to you with the technology so you can be a part of it. So, Sandra, this is the way of manifestation. The Palladians are giving us the information, our galactic brothers and sisters, by planting something in Sandra and saying, Sandra, this is your mission. Meditate to all the higher beings, God, Christos, and we will give you that knowledge, and that's going to be your mission. So Maria's mission has been all about the new quantum healing and technology. So now I have all the people around me that are working on it, involving me so that we can roll it out. It is not going to be the Palladians coming down, here's your med beds. Anybody saying this, Sandra, is lying. I hear what you. What are your thoughts? Well, no, no, I agree with you. And, you know, it was funny when you were talking about your, you know, God saying get more blunt and about two months ago, not or maybe just a little bit longer than that, they were really pushing me. Say it like it is. Say, don't candy coat it. Don't be so soft with it. Don't hope that you're going around this corner and they're going to get it and turn around and come back to you. You're going to need, and when we tell you to turn the camera on, we're going to, Go with it and you're going to use that that vocals of yours and that passion of yours, however, which way, and then hit end and send it. Do not look at it again. And so I I too have been picking that up. Now I also know that that the the whole guy team, they they you know, we've got some human and, and some galactic mixtures all over the place. You can call them angelics. You can call them whatever you please. They're higher beings, divine beings that are strategically placed to assist those that came down with that agenda to get to this plateau, to then meet them, right? And then come together so you can take it out to humanity, really. And that's kind of exactly what you're talking about. You needed to get over there to get on a different platform to meet the people that were building it out. Now you're coming up. Now you're going on the same platform and now you're going to be going out and bringing it out to the masses. And kudos to you, girlfriend, for yeah, listening well, and following. Yes. Thank you. That is the secret. You know that everybody has a divine mission. This is not unique to me or you or any like yeah. any particular people. Everybody has a divine mission, whether they're awake or unawake, and it doesn't matter. It uh, God does not discriminate. Source does not discriminate. But he said to me, I said to him, God, why is it that some people um, are not realizing what that mission is like i'm hearing you very clearly every day directing me what to do uh you know what i should do with my body uh so that i can have maximum health whatever else and he said maria the thing with you is you're humble that's, you're that's humble the meek in you mm -hmm. and you have the purity of a child so you're vibrating on agape which is unconditional love the ancient greek word which means that's the frequency that you connect to me. He said, if someone is vibrating from the left side of the brain, that's why Jesus Christ said, cast your net to the right. He never said, cast your net to the left. So anything left, left part is left, whatever we know is all a cabal. They kept telling us, go to the left. What's the right? The right is the peace, the agape, the creativity, the Mary Magdalene, the feminine, the, the, the left is the ego, the pride. I know it all. I don't have to do anything. I'm going to wait for Nasara. I'm going to wait for Jasara. I'm going to wait for the RV. So all this sort of left brain people that are there and attached to things of this world, as the Bible says, 
anybody attached to that kind of thinking on the left brain, I know it all. I'm not going to listen to her because I know what to do. I'm, they're not listening to God. They're on the wrong frequency of I know it all, I, pride, ego, all of that. Fear is the worst killer. Um, so therefore, um, God's here at this frequency of agape, uh, and they're down here. And it's like, how are you going to connect? How are you going to meet? You did that before with your hands. I mm -hmm. saw you. How are you going to connect? And what I say to people is I have a great video on my website, Q Consciousness. Q is the ancient word for source, meaning God. So you need to get to Q Consciousness. So get up those 17 levels, get, get over the pride, get over the ego, get over the fear, the envy, the 13 deadly sins, heal them. And then you go here and the energies that are coming in are bringing all of that stuff up for people to heal. So I'm saying to people, don't project it on others, project it inwards. And with the know thyself, heal thyself, which mm -hmm. is what the ancient Greeks used to do. And people wonder why were this ancient Greeks so ahead of their times? I mean, they were galactic beings. What do you think those gods and goddesses were? They were the galactic beings in contact with the people that gave them the astronomy, that gave them all the healing wisdoms that I now share with everybody, which is from them. Why? Because they know thyself, they didn't project, they vibrated on agape Q consciousness, and therefore the downloads just kept coming. And this is what's happening now, Sandra. The downloads are coming. But if you're not on the right frequency, you ain't going to receive your mission. You ain't going to receive the solutions of how to heal yourself. You ain't going to receive the solutions. Am I in the right place? Should I move? You're not going to receive it. You know why? Because you're blocking it. You're blocking it. Well, I think people aren't taught how to, how to ask and then how to listen and receive because they're expecting it in certain ways. And we're programmed to, to grow up, work nine to five, live in that program, get into that syndrome, that enslavement. And, you know, you're taught God's up here over there and I've got to go through with all these people and I'll never get there because then I can't look at him at, or her as this hierarchy, uh, you know, instead of looking at you are the God and you are, and you can, and you can achieve it once you let go of some of that programming and let the ego step aside, which it still has to function within us because we're humans. But if we can get over to that creative, get into that feminine flow, heal the masculine and feminine within each individual, not just within groups or genders, it's within ourselves and, and, and balance that. Then our physical sensories and then our extra perceptual sensories will begin to kick in and you'll be able to trust what it is that inner knowingness without having to feel it and touch it and see. Do you know what I mean? Yes, yes. And, and you know, as Jesus Christ always said to me, uh, Maria, you're not someone that I look up to as an ascended master. He said, everybody is an ascended master. So you need to view me as your friend. And every day you need to have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea with me and have a discussion with me so I can help you and guide you. And that's what I do every day with God. I don't view God as someone that's woo -hoo -hoo up there uh, beyond reach. Uh, the first thing I do when I wake up is my prayers and meditations and in communion with my whole spiritual committee. And it's like, what will you have me do today? Where will you have me go? And please bring in my energy field people that need healing with their health, their mind, their spirit, or someone that I need to physically help via a kind word, via buying them lunch, via buying them dinner, via uh, giving them money, whatever it is. And it's really interesting because every day I find someone to help. And a lot of the times it could be here at the canal, there's a lot of homeless people. Um, so I'm guided to just stop. And I can see that they don't get any help because they're like, are you giving this money to me? And I'm like, yes, sir, I'm giving it to you. And it's not coming from me. It's coming from Mother, Father, God and Christos. Uh, I am just the vehicle to let you know that you are loved um, and you are a powerful being and you just need to turn to God and believe that and he will help you out of this situation. 
And then sometimes I will sit and talk to them and getting back to the point that you said, do you know that sometimes these angelic beings that may be in the form of a homeless person and they're not homeless, some of them are actually angels that have come down in that form to test us. Will Maria stop and help them? Do you know that they then have a divine word to say to me or some guidance to give me? And one particular one that I helped gave me one of the most beautiful books. He said, Maria, this is the most valuable thing I have in my back, which is daily God's wisdom, which I post every day in my Telegram channel, a page from in his honor. And I said to him, I'd like to see you uh, here again, because I gave him everything that I had in my wallet. God said, give everything. And I had $70 and I gave it all. I said, okay, God, I just obey. I just obey and I'm not rolling in money, but if God tells me to give it all, I give it all. <laughs> just so people know I'm not rolling in it, guys. You know, I'm renting. I don't own anything. Um, just so can people appreciate that. So oh, Maria must have so much money that, you know, she's, you know, because sometimes people it. say that crap. I get it. And you don't have to explain yourself. Just yeah. So, you know. so I'm just, you know, saying, to, and it was interesting. This uh, man, uh, that I helped. And then he gave me that book, which has just changed my life. His name was Victor. And I said, I'm going to call you victory. And he said, but that's what I'm, this was before I moved to Hawaii. When I came here briefly uh, to find an apartment and he said, Oh no, I'm a messenger from God to tell you, you will have victory. And then I, uh, then I started walking and I said, well, and I wanted to turn around and say, can I see you again? Guess what? He disappeared. He was nowhere to be found. I go back to the same spot regularly and he's not there. So that was a messenger from God brought down in the form of a homeless person looking homeless. So I guess the point I'm trying to make is I'm validating what you said. Sometimes the least likely people that God puts in our path to give us about our spiritual evolution and journey. I just, all I can do is breathe on that one. It's, it's so true. And you know what? We have to pay attention when something says stop, drop, sit, or move or, or do things because it's all, it's all spiritual communication. And much of it is it's lessons to teach you how to trust when you do react or respond to a situation that you're being some inner voice. that doesn't make any like go this way today for work. And you're like, okay. And you go that way. And next thing you know, it's the most pleasant drive or something occurs. And then you later realize, oh my gosh, I would have been stuck in a five car backup that other way. And I didn't even know it. There's so many stories we could share about the divine beings being right there around us all the time and yeah. they're in the form of that and they're also in the form as our brothers and sisters like us and bouncing off of each other and getting the messages that we get and trusting and following that what people want to call your intuition but that's your god voice your imagination yes. is your god's face but it's also a test of whether we're ready to receive and manifest and i'll tell you what um Another thing that God said to me recently, he said, Maria, the reason why you're manifesting so quickly and you're getting all these wonderful people and opportunities coming your way, and I never had this happen in New York City. I, I just want to get this straight. He said, it's because you're doing a lot of giving. And he said, because you're doing a lot of giving, you're entitled, and he used that word, you are entitled to a lot of receiving because you have shown that you listen to me and you're all about being of service to other people and helping and giving before the receiving. And um, and sometimes it can be something that's really valuable to you that God will ask you to give. Like, for example, uh, you know, coming back on United Airlines uh, from when I went to this uh, convention uh, in, in Aruba where I saw this amazing technology coming out, you know, I saw this air hostess and I could see she was really low low energy but of course I don't judge I just noticed it and I was sending her love anyway I get up and I'm going to use the bathroom you know up the back because I was you know in the back in the economy uh, section there and that was the nearest uh you know toilet to go to and I'm smiling at her and she looks at me and she says 
what are those beads around your neck? And I said, oh, ma'am, I said, this is the offering of love of the Hawaiians and it's the kui nuts. I was explaining all of this and I could see she was feeling the positive energy from what I was wearing around my neck. She was really gravitating to, you know, all this stuff that I wear, sacred geometry, uh, but the beads as well, she liked the look of. So anyway, I didn't think anything of it. I thanked her. I went to the toilet. And when I went in the toilet, guess what God said? I know they're really valuable to you, Maria, but guess what? You have to give them to her. Guess what? I didn't even, I forgot about the sentimental value. I forgot about what they meant to me. I obeyed God. I get out. And she was there at the back of, you know, the airplane, you know, fixing things, Coffee you know, all and sorts stuff, of things. Right? And I get up to her and I said, ma'am, I said, uh, God just spoke to me and said that I need to give these to you. So I took them off and she was refusing. And I said, no, this is a gift from God. And you have to receive with gratitude and say, thank you, God, not me. Thank you, God. And I put them around her neck and I said, may they bring you abundance, love, peace, and everything your heart desires. Can I tell you, she started crying. She said, that is the most beautiful thing anybody's done for me. Then it gets better. Listen to this. Then she's up the back, unbeknownst to me, telling everybody. And the lady that was sitting next to me, because I was in the middle seat, you know, with a mother and daughter next to me. I wanted them to sit together, but they were okay with that arrangement. And, you know, she comes and sits next to me. She says, you know what? The air hostess up the back was telling me this wonderful story of this woman that gave her these beads she's lit up and I didn't say anything then she comes with water you know with a little trolley and she says oh my god that's the woman I was telling you about pointing to me and I'm like oh my god everybody on the airplane knows me. so do you see how one act of kindness changed the vibrational frequency of the entire airplane because everybody heard about this act of kindness that went to the toilet and everybody was just beaming. So so the thing is, we can do one little act that God tells us and change a multitude of lives and not even know it. Absolutely. And, you know, I, when you were talking there earlier about, um, you know, God saying, you know, it's time for you to receive because you've always been giving. And the message that was coming through for me is they were showing me the scales. And sometimes it might look like that scale is tipped in not in your favor like you're just overdoing and overdoing and you know not exactly looking for total appreciation but it's like come on can I get a break here you know God will always balance it out it just has to be the right time and we have to learn to be able to know when to speak and know when to listen and really right now it's learning how to listen more and then listen to what needs to be said. And then the vibration in which you're saying it for the other person or persons to receive it. And then in that is the act of love and the act of, of manifesting what's being given to you, which is thoughts and words. And like, how do you bring them out? How do you say them? How do you put your vocals together? How do you combine it with your heart? That's an act of love. Yes, yes. And uh, very important uh, of all, um, I think some people have been misled into thinking and believing that they can just, you know, visualize and things will uh, come. Very important. What Mother Father God said to me, Maria, that needs to be not many, but a few targeted agape based considered actions. I, I action was coming through my head here. I was like, I'm going, I wanted to scream it for a quick second when you were talking. It's action, action, action. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, most camera, people sit camera back lights, on the recliner. Yes. Yeah, well, exactly. Most yes. people sit on the recliner. Oh, I'm just oh, going to say a few affirmations. Uh, you know, hello, uh, it, it ain't, it ain't, it ain't going to happen. And, yeah. um, and an interesting message I post the other day on Facebook, um, God had to pull me back because Maria was taking too many actions and he was saying, Maria, you don't have to do that many actions. And I did a video on Facebook. He says, pull it back. He says, you have an accumulation of considered actions of agape. 
Now he said, for you, I've sent you to Hawaii to enjoy your life a little bit rather than work like you used to 24 hours, seven days a week. Now I want you to sit back, focus more on, uh, you know, prayer, meditation, allowing and asking. So, you know, maybe sometimes the people that are taking action is the other point I wanted to say. Maybe they've been doing what Marie's doing and taking too many, too much action mm -hmm. and not enough uh, sitting back and allowing. So it's up to them to go into communion with God and work out whether they're, they're doing that. So he had to pull me back and say, you know what, Maria, uh, you've been neglecting going on these walks that you used to every morning. Start, start. You, you've been getting back onto your computer and doing this, answer all the emails, help all the people. So pull back. So that's another thing that I found that I was, uh, when, we had to make an adjustment that God said to me. Well, again, it goes back to balancing the scales. And, you know, when we're overdoing and overdoing and overdoing, we begin to deplete ourselves. So we could sit here and, and feed everybody, but if we don't stop for a moment and enjoy a bowl of that food ourselves, We've got nothing left to give. And then we run out of steam. And then everything that we touch is affected by that energy. So is it a low vibrational energy because you've allowed yourself to be depleted? Or are you working from a higher vibration because you're giving yourself as much love as you're giving out to other people? The acts of kindness that I do, I let spirit show me. I get up in the morning and I'm just like, what? I just pay attention. It could just be sitting and watching a bird and 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 hoping that they're getting the right little pieces of of tree to build their little nest and it's not going to fall out of the out of the uh, gutter. It could be a lot of different things. But I just That's pay attention to what thing. spirit guides me. Yes, yes, exactly. Again, it's you know, um as we sort of both discussed before, uh it's the after I do my <laughs> my prayers and meditation I do the asking, you know, where is it that you have me go today? What is it that you have me do, God, today? Who is it that you have me help you? So they're my three questions that I ask every morning. And then I say, uh, I surrender those uh, answers to you. And wherever I go today, guide me as to who and where. And sometimes I will get guided to go down strange streets. And I'm like, this is a long way to get to this place. Where am I going now? I'm lost. But in that moment of being lost, it's be, it's not that I'm lost. God has taken me there because there's the person I want you to help, Maria. That's why you didn't go that straight path. So, you, so you know, even when, like you said, when you're stuck in traffic or you're delayed, there's a reason for that. You know, maybe it's to save you from something or to for you to meet someone. Just go with it and don't resist it and don't complain. Oh, my God, these red lights are on red for too long. Oh, my God. You know, this mm -hmm. is the, and this is why people uh, don't manifest or don't meet the people that are supposed to help them on their path because they're too busy complaining and not seeing the positive side that this is a lesson or, or getting me in the direction. Hello, this could be the direction of meeting your, I mean, if, if you're putting it out there, meeting your life partner, for God's sake. Maybe you need to take that wrong direction. Maybe you need to be stuck in traffic. Maybe you need to miss your flight to get on the next flight because next to you is going to be sitting that perfect man or whatever. You know, everything has a purpose, Sandra. I always say this to people. Don't look at it with misery and negativity. Look at it as if I always say, what is this trying to teach me, God? Uh, who am I supposed to meet? Why have I missed my flight? Reveal it to me. So I never go into panic. And, oh, my God, I'm going to be five hours late. No, I always, like, remain in my peace and say, okay, God, this is happening for a reason. Help me understand what that reason is. Am I supposed to meet someone? Uh, you know, are you saving me from something? Uh, and it, it, he pretty much reveals what it is. And then I just stay calm and say, that's great. Fantastic. I'll wait for five hours for the next flight. It's okay. Well, lots of times I don't even allow myself to get up there and get that mental about it. I can just be like, okay, all right. Obviously, uh, I'm experiencing a delay here. So whatever that might be, I'm just going to, I'm just going to set my laurels down and wait for the next plane and pay attention to what's going on around me and, and, you know, be peacefully in within my physical body and not out all over the place going, Oh my God, because, you know, just the experience with the, with the airports, they're insane. 
the energetics yeah, can be very insane. So yeah. And I'll give you another uh, example of manifestation and thank you to United Airlines uh, who I've never flown with uh, before, but you know, of course my ticket was brought by someone else. So I flew with them. Here there were people lined up all wanting to upgrade, complaining this, that. Meanwhile, I'm just sitting there, you know, very quietly. And I could see that I had no seat allocation on my ticket, no seat allocation. And I'm like, I don't know what this means, but I'm going to wait for all these people complaining to just finish <laughs> complaining before I front up, you know, to the lovely lady at the gate. So I front up and I say, hi, ma'am, how, how are you? She's not having a good day. And I said, well, I'd like to give you some aloha spirit, <laughs> you know. And, I, you know, I made her laugh and I and said, don't worry about, the, you know. So I said just a few kind words and she says, like, what are you here for? And I said, look, ma'am, my seat is not allocated. So I handed over my ticket. Uh, she hands it back to me and I didn't pay attention to the seat, you know, because I, I don't understand how the seats on that plane work. Anyway, I get in and I'm like, is this correct? Am I at the right seats? I mean, it was an economy ticket, right? Uh, well, that they had paid for. What? She upgraded me to business class. Nice. Business class. And I'm like, is this my seat? Yes, it is. Maria, thank you, God. I receive it. I accept it. So do you see what happens when you have the right mindset and say, you know what? I'm not going to align, align myself with the controlled opposition, which is what they are. Controlled opposition comes in the forms of people meet, leading you astray on YouTube, BitChute and whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't know who they are, God help you by now. Um that is controlled opposition. I was not going to go with that line of those people, uh -uh, not buying into that energy of fear, wait, the RVs coming, all those people controlled opposition. Anybody that's still talking about the med beds are coming and the RVs coming is controlled opposition. God has said, I need to be honest now. And, um, and I said, I'm not part of the chat because they are the chat. Um, I went there as the wheat. And do you see how God always rewards us can i tell you i'm so blessed sandra i have one miracle after another happening and i don't even ask for it so what i'm trying to say is i'm not anybody's more special than anybody because we're all equal if i can do it anybody can do it is what yes. i'm trying to say here yes and it's that in that in that in the trusting in tunement i mean like for me you know, I never went back to full-time work since the whole thingy majiggy. And, you know, I work here and there. I do a couple days at a med spa. I do some of this work. I'm waiting to be guided. I'm taking this course, you know, I'm doing this and that. And every month my bills are met. I don't fret over it. I don't worry about it. If a healing session comes along and I'm being really called to do it, I don't go, oh, Oh, that's all I only have I only have this much and they want this much and I do it I follow it because it gets replenished and I don't have to worry about it I just don't worry anymore about any of it because I know I'm always provided for and I'll always be safe and have inner peace as long as I trust divine creator of the universe because I am divine creator of the universe I'm one with all of that well, you're living the 5G life. That's what it is. Uh, anybody that has any doubt uh, or any of that left brain thinking, as we said before, is living in 3D and is stuck in 3D. So they're in the matrix and they've chosen that. Everything is a choice. Sure. Um, so they need to find the solutions, um, you know, and to get out of it. And, oh, my God, I have prepared so many videos on all of this and I'm like, if you if you had watched Sandra's videos and my videos and Kimberly Palm's videos, you know, people, you know, you two that I have a complete trust that are not controlled opposition, uh, then you wouldn't be having this issue. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? But you're too busy watching oh, what's going on. Is President Trump going to be arrested? Oh, and my like, God. Like, I, 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 or who's I, got I, the I, right information about that? that? Who's on huh? who's on whose show? Who's got the right information on that? Who's telling the best conspiracy secrets? Because they know because they're connected and they know all this information. You're like, what does that do for you right now in this moment to be the best person 
connected Nothing. to your God self, not a damn thing. Nothing. It's a distraction evolution. and it will shut you down. Well, Sandra, I'm here to tell you, and I can't divulge too much information that I've seen a lot of these people's names on a list and they are being paid a very lovely salary to be controlled opposition. I've not seen the list, but I, um, I know every time they come across, I, yeah. I know immediately, I'm told immediately who they are and I don't need to know any details. I just go, mm, swipe. I don't need to listen to that. Yes, They don't even yes. come up on any of my platforms anymore. And when they do, I never even hit them because I have no desire to go, well, maybe it's changed. Maybe their visions have changed. Maybe something may, and I'm like, no, not, not in my realm. No, no we're not in here because we're so in tune. I don't know about you, but I get a sick feeling like I want to throw up. I just get a knowing, like, I get a quick yeah. A quick, super knowing, and I may even get a little bit more information about it. And then I, I don't even need to divulge it. I just go, okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, Maria was really uh, quite vocal about over a year ago. And boy, did I cop a lot of, uh, you know, criticism. Why? Because um, people may not know I have a law background. Yes, and, you do. And, and not only that, I saw their criminal records. They're, they're available to the public. Hello, people, use your freaking brain. Get the name and do a little bit of research. What were they doing before three years? Um, and one particular one that has millions of followers, oh, my goodness me, he's a convicted pedophile that has been used as controlled opposition and people yeah. are following him. And, oh, my God, oh, my God. And it's like, are you people crazy? Did you do it? Have you done any Google searches on anybody, even me, to see what I did? Five years ago, ten years ago, have a look at what I did. Uh, you'll see, I have no criminal, no criminal record. I worked to put criminals in jail. Is what you're going to find, uh, you know, with Maria. And and this is the thing. And because I was putting these little criminal records up in my Telegram channel, like guys, you may want to know this person is a convicted pedo. You may want to know they've convicted. All, and you know what? People are still following. Uh, oh no! People. Yeah, I know they, they overlooked it. Up, Maria. How yeah. can I make up something that's on the PACER system? They don't want to hear it because people would rather die well, than change. They'd rather yeah. die than change. And for, know, some, well, and for some reason, there's some kind of frequency that has them sucked into that. And we all know that it's pulling your blinders down on your own God antenna. We know that already. Yes. And so you're you're literally lowering, keeping yourself in low vibration by refusing to take those blinders off and just explore and then make your own decision, not based on how many followers they have or a vibration you may feel because you may find that you now are aware that vibration isn't for healthy for you. Yeah, Sandra, I'm here to tell you that there's a great website where you can go and buy followers. So if Maria, if Maria wanted, and, and I know that they bought their followers from there, by the way, this is why I'm that saying That is hilarious. That. I've yeah, been so like slowly if, accumulating, yeah. not caring after three years. I'm like, I'm not in this for I, I do having I, all I, these subscribers. But at the same time, I'm like, how did, how did that person get so many subscribers? Oh, oh, now there, you're there telling me you could buy them? Well, damn. Oh, I'm, ab absolutely. Cause, and someone brought this to my attention when they terminated my YouTube channel because I was saying the truth. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I lost over 20,000 people. Just went overnight. And, and they were saying, you're giving health advice, blah, blah, blah. That was the only thing. I appealed, got no response. And then someone said, Maria, oh, why don't you do why so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so who have, you know, over 100 you know, anybody over 30,000, I can tell you now, most of them are buying. So they said, that's how they got all those over 30,000 and jumped. Uh, go on here and just purchase it. All you need to do is put your credit card and they'll take every day a certain amount out. And then, you know, your numbers will go up. And they said, oh my goodness me, you will get people being attracted to you and coming to you because I'll see your followers going up. I said, are you kidding I say, me? no, thank you. I don't want any exactly. of that energy. Amen. None of it. Amen. <laughs> And I mean, but Sandra, I just wanted to let you know, this is how delusional people are. If they're looking at followers and have them worked out that they're part of the cabal and that they've paid, well, it's a cabal activity, isn't it? If you're paying for followers to attract people, you must be part of the 3D matrix cabal because a godly person would not do something like that to deceive people. Yes. That's yes. lying. Yeah. So, uh, so yes, yeah, so there's uh, some wonderful websites where you can buy followers for those people 
that are wondering, you might want to do a little bit of research. You want to become an overnight success. It'll just cost you a little <laughs> bit of money. Put your credit card in here. Just tap exactly. it here. Oh, and and you get little installment plans as well, by the way, Sandra. You know, every budget will be accommodated for. I'm sorry. I you love have it. We should make a commercial this. for it. <laughs> <laughs> I should. I might actually get some followers. Oh, <laughs> my God. Now, well, we I, I, laugh, I, Spirit you. brings us what we're supposed to have. So that's all there is to it. And, and we already know there's a lot of made up followers out there. They're just bot numbers. There's just a lot yeah. of bots. I, you know, I'm, I'm bots are not allowed in my, in my world. And if they do come in, it's like they, you know, they can't do anything to me. So I feel like I'm fully exactly. protected. So what else would we like to share with everybody? And, you know, we're going to do, you know, number two, we, we took so long everyone to take this one because Maria was in the middle of the move. So I knew when we interviewed that she was on the download, not announcing that she was moving. So I, we've waited for her to get settled and everything else. So we'll definitely do a number three. Uh, but for right now, let's go ahead and uh, leave our viewers with a little something, something and how they can get in touch with you and, you know, all the uh, uh, good cooking you're doing out there. I'm seeing a lot of that. That's so yes, awesome. Uh, I, I have started uh, my culinary experiences here in, uh, in, in Hawaii. And I'm actually the first, um, uh, culinary experience slash cooking school that uh, incorporates energy devices in the actual space. Uh, and I actually increase, I have some devices that I've invested in, which are not available to the public, where I increase the vibrational frequency of the fruit and vegetables mm. and ingredients. Uh, so over and above. So I'm doing some really unbelievable stuff with uh, quantum technology and people can find and see all this uh, on my um it's a website which is on on the page maria bernardas dot com. It's, it's and it will be in the I'm description too. So oh, thank you so yes, much. Yeah, of course. So so they can see my culinary experiences and everything that I do, and also what I'm launching, which is new. Mother, Father, God said I need to do this now. He says you've been hiding. You need to come back out again. I'm actually uh, starting a uh, hands on here in in Hawaii. Uh, of ancient Greek uh, energy and sound healing on people's mm. bodies. So he said, uh, stop hiding and doing it just with your friends and healing them. So very soon I will be uh, starting up a new page as to people how can how they can do that. But it will be the original Reiki, as I call it, because mm. ancient Greeks practice Reiki. They just didn't call it Reiki because you yes. know, it's Japanese. Yes. So I'm going back to the original Reiki of healing. So he said it's about time uh, that you you did that uh, publicly. So yeah, so I'm all about quantum healing, like the like the new quantum healing that's coming in that we discussed earlier on. I'm very heavily involved uh, with all of that and bringing it to the people in uh, healing centers. And I want to set the first one up here in Hawaii. Um, and um, and unlike everybody else, God is guiding me that this should be something that's offered for free and via donation. So not like these people that are, uh, you know, charging, and it's not even up to this level that I'm talking about of quantum technology. They're charging 100, 200. He's saying no donation. You're all about here, Maria, to help heal the world. And I'm going to make the funds available for you to set it all up. And it will belong to Mother Gaia. So it's not going to be owned by Maria. It's going to be run by Maria, owned by God, in trust for Mother Gaia and in trust for the local Hawaiians, because after all, it is their um, their land. Oh, that's so wonderful. Can't wait to be neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> you can come and visit. And, and oh, I would <laughs> love to. I would love to. All right, my dear. Well, stay put while we just say goodbye. And everyone, her descriptions will be in um links and everything will be in the description, but I'm asking you to please like, subscribe and share. Leave us a comment. It does help our algorithms. It helps the, the video move around. So maybe someone who doesn't know of Sandra and Maria can pick this up and go, oh, I learned something from that or it touched me in a way and now I want to share it. But that requires giving us the finger. <laughs> 
please. <laughs> the right finger. Yeah, the just right give finger, us the finger, the one of them. I don't care which one, just hit it. It could be a thumb or an index, all right? And uh, we love each and every one of you. <laughs> all right. Okay, say bye, Maria. Bye-bye. Love and agape to everybody.